also welcome welcome for posterior medium yes sir yeah. uh and outset i will say this is a very common approach and most of the uh, viewers must be doing this approach regularly routine in their practice so there will not be anything great or new thing which can be so seen in this approach welcome for posterior but i have got my few yes, tic tacs and usually this is a posterior medial approach for a posterior medial condyle tibia but you can do posterior lateral condyle also from this approach so how it can be done you can see 85% of posterior tibial articular surface from this tibial condyle from this approach so how can we get access so i will put it as a extended posterior medial approach and that will allow it is a classical approach for posterior bicondylar tibial fractures because so many times you will see that posterior medial condyle is there but along with that there is a posterior lateral depression or impaction is there so we will see here two cases in which one case posterior medial is a major fragment posterior lateral will be a depressed impacted fragment and second case will be a posterior medial small undisplaced or minimally displaced fracture but posterior lateral will be a large depression of the whole condyle and how we did it so we will see bo uh, both the cases and i will see edited very nice video and i am sure that after seeing this video everybody will be able to do it in their clinic this is a very simple approach and there is no danger first case this is a posterior bicondylar tibial fracture the ct scan is there and you can appreciate with my arrows the red arrow is showing posterior medial condyle in coronal plane as well as in the 3d picture the green arrow is showing that the lateral condyle outer rim is intact with posterior lateral part so lateral condyle medial half posterior medial half of the lateral condyle is depressed and impacted and the round circle is showing that that this is a impacted lateral condyle right now we will directly go to the video prone position left side thigh the uh, transverse line is the popliteal crease and i just curve the incision a little bit on the central side from the medial side I'll cut skin and subcutaneous tissue gently. Don't go very deep; otherwise, you will cut the gastrocnemius muscle. Bleeder comes; you just cauterize it. Second step. Now I will develop the interval between the semitendinous and medial of gastrocnemius proximally, and I will cut the fascia over the medial of gastrocnemius. My finger is running and palpating the semitendinous muscle proximally. That should be saved in initial. Few times I could nick it, so it is. We have to be very careful. We don't have to cut the semitendinous. Now you retract, separate, my run your finger under the gastrocnemius middle head, and separate it from the underlying popliteus muscle. Now you can see in the floor, popliteus muscle, which is retract, and the middle head gastrocnemius is retracted by the assistant from opposite side with two large retractors. and i am palpating the posterior medial border of tibia with my finger because my knife is going to touch the posterior medial border it should touch the bone when i cut the popliteal muscle origin from the posterior medial border of the tibia you can see how my knife cut directly on the bone so it will elevate hold the popliteal muscle from the origin from the medial border you can follow cut with the knife only don't use too much of blunt dissector and periosteum elevator uska chunda ban jayega muscle ka so you cut all the fibers from the dissect of periosteum reach to the bone and stew on the bone is the principle in this approach to prevent the injury to the vessel now i'll be cutting the proximal tendinous part of the popliteal muscle from the posterior medial surface of the tibia i am cutting that tendinous portion when you cut this tendinous portion be careful you cut the fibers which you see it because medially just next to it it is a popliteal artery so if you cut blindly you will you can nick the popliteal artery but it is very safe you, you you will see the vessels are far off from the muscle actually so the muscle is totally released now i will show you release muscle whole popliteal muscle from the origin proximally and medial border is released and the vessel i will show this is the vessel on the popliteal muscle so muscle popliteal muscle will be protecting the vessels okay now 
I will be doing tenotomy of the middle head of gastrocnemius muscle as I want to go posterolaterally also. Because if muscle is not cut, then it will not allow that much retraction. If somebody wants to do only posterior middle condyle, then I think this much resection is enough. You don't need to release the middle half of gastrocnemius and don't need to release the soleus. But here, as we want to go medial half of posterior condyle, we will release both. So muscle is released, only tenderness portion is cut, no muscle fibers are cut. Now we will see soleal line. This is soleal line. And I will be releasing soleus muscle from the soleal line. And I will release from distal to proximal. My knife will be reverse. Because if you go from proximal to distal and enter in the muscle, you can likely to cut posterior tibial artery. So it is very near in that soleal line. So we have to release from the uh, subterrestrially, from distal to proximal manner, and cut only 10 years portion, and go and palpating with your finger that you release completely. I have palpated my finger. The soleal line completely released soleus muscle, and you can then you will be able to go far laterally. It is released. Now we will see medial condyle, posterior medial condyle. Now the complete dissection is there. You can see whole posterior surface of the tibial condyle and you can reduce the condyle as per the displacement. Now plating is done. The posterior medial plating is done. And now we will focus on a posterior condyle. My, both the spikes are on the lateral surface of tibia and my suction is in the joint. Now you can see the light is there. Then you can see the depressed white articular surface of the posterior condyle. That is the article surface. That, is, that was elevated and uh, you, ele you elevate maximum till you don't see the article surface. Put a filler and then put a plate. So plating was done and this after plating, this is the muscle. I mean, you will be able to see second plate also. That second plate inside and that the vessel lying on the puppetous muscle. So this is one exposure. This is the closer, incision and closer. And you can see post of X-ray. And that's the follow-up after one and a half year. So that's full healing and uh, both the plates are in position, good reduction. Another case we will see now, this is the AP X-ray of the uh, evil condyle fracture. I thought it is a fracture later condyle tibia. Now it is a, you can see there is a vertical split showing the posterior middle condyle and the slope of the later condyle is going posteriorly and facing posteriorly. Now we will see 3D CT. So we can see large posterior lateral condyle is totally inside the joint. Lateral margin and anterolateral margin is totally intact. There is no fracture there. And posterior middle condyle is seen on end on view. Classic. It is so again, it is a posterior bicondylar tibial fracture involving both the condyles. And posterior lateral condyle is a split depression fracture. You can see there is a vertical split in the cortex posterior laterally, and there is a depression of the articular surface. As it happens in anterolateral side, exactly the same thing happened on the posterior lateral side with fibula head intact. So this is posterior bicondylar tibia is the diagnosis. And you can see the depression fracture of posterior condyle, it is facing direct posteriorly. So posterior middle condyle needs posterior middle approach. It dictates the posterior middle approach. And posterior condyle needs posterior lateral approach. But here both the things are there. So we can avoid double approach and we can do single approach, extensive posterior middle approach, which can allow fixation of both the condyles together. So again, we will see the same approach. It will be a sort of a revision thing, but we will see how the posterior condyle see seen in this approach very nicely. So again, the uh, same incision, skin subcutaneous tissue cut, just covered beyond the crease of the popliteal beyond the popliteal crease. Cut skin and subcutaneous tissue gently. Don't make very bold incision, and you will be able to develop the plane. Now this is artery is showing the hamstring muscle, uh, semi tendinosus. Now I will develop the plane between the semi tendinosus and the middle half gastrocnemius. There will be fat there. So the tendon is embedded in the fat. So you palpate the tendon and then cut, otherwise you will cut the tendon. I will separate it. Then I will separate the middle half gastrocnemius from the popliteal muscle. Running my finger finger underneath the middle half gastrocnemius. And in the floor, you will see popliteal muscle. Now I will cut the popliteal muscle directly as done in the previous case. My knife will touch the bone. 
when i cut the muscle my knife should touch the bone that's the criteria so you are said my knife is touching the bone and cutting the muscle completely cut muscle completely up to the bone go up to proximally up to tendinous portion but don't release the tendinous portion first first you release the muscular part and then cut the tendon by palpating so you don't damage the vessel i will show you in the next slide i am erasing the fiber with a knife only now i will elevate the fibers with the periosteum elevator okay so i created a space now i will cut the tendinous portion i have put up the spike already under the popliteus and i am cutting the tendinous portion by palpating it will give you release feeling i am releasing it i have released it see and cut and then palpate with the finger the no 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 tendinous fibers are left because next to it will be a popliteal vessel just be careful not very dangerous we are all surgeons we can uh, take care of the things then pass a spike under it yeah and the pass spike in the later part of the tibia now so remaining fibers are erased now you can see hematoma is coming out from the lateral condyle so this is a posterior condyle there is opening there so split differential fracture hematoma is coming out now this is the muscle and there is the vessel i will show you the vessel vessels are very nicely protected by the muscle till the upper end of tibia beyond that there is no muscle protecting the vessels are directly there over the capsule this is the vessel Usually I don't see like this. Just for video purpose and showing the things I recorded. It. Now this is soleal line. My fiber, my tooth force is running on the soleal line. There are the fibers of soleus muscle attaching on the soleal line. Again, I will release from the distal to proximal manner, releasing all the tendinous portion of the muscle. Don't enter the soleus muscle mass. Just release from the tendon, so there is no bleeding. there are no bleeders in this region except a middle genicular artery and a popliteal artery otherwise you don't find any any bleeder after releasing tourniquet so if you see bleeding then think of these two thing only completely release all the fibers of the soleus there are some fibers are remaining i will uh, i will release it now we'll do tenotomy of the middle have gastrocnemius as i have shown that with the fiber now i will cut only tendinous portion tendons white don't cut any red fibers so don't cut the muscle at the end of end of the procedure don't do suture it also just leave it see you can give release feeling yeah or are released if i'll pay it any of the fibers are remaining tendinous band release it so it will give you access to the posterior part of the condyle otherwise the muscle will not allow it to go that much retraction i palpated everything yeah i can go there now this is posterior medial condyle and that's the posterior condyle window i am pressing the window, uh, split this is soleal line my four was we running on that that's the capsule and that's the middle condyle of the femur that is the middle condyle yeah so you can see from middle condyle of the femur this even middle hopa factor can be fixed from this approach posterior middle hopa posteriorly posterior small part now you can see that that the window and you can see arrow picture is there what i am handling 3d ct picture is there so i am opening that window posterior cortex posterior cortex medial posterior plating is done first it is always better to when you are doing posterior condyle first do posterior medial plating complete it then and then do posterior condyle because sometimes the tbi is posteriorly displaced so you will not be able to see it properly 
So first, better do complete posterior medial fixation, and then you can see white articular surface. I have elevated that split, and you can open that articular surface. Yeah, it will be just in front of your eyes. This is how it looks like. I have put the 3D picture. What we can articular surface of the tibia, we, we are seeing it, and you can see the white articular depression. Total condyle is almost seen, and you can elevate from this same window. This is articular surface which we can see. The depression, the whole condyle which is depressed can be palpated. Suction can be put in the joint, aspirate the hematoma, and then elevate and fix it. Now I will be elevating it. So I will start from proximal to distal. I will get my ostrum exactly under the fragment with some bone, subchondral bone, good amount, and then elevate it completely like this. I will elevate till I don't see the articular surface. That will be the maximum because later on the femur will act as a template. So I cannot do over elevation. Just give some traction to the limb so it will open up the joint a little bit, and you can do a little bit over elevation, over correction of the depression. And then what are the gap remaining? You can put one K wire also under the fragment after elevation, and then put up uh, your filler. I usually use a Kronos or a bone graft. The patient cannot afford filler, and then close the window and put a plate. So this is the window which is closed after elevating and filling the Kronos. See, I can reduce it perfectly well. The window is completely closed. Then I will buttress the elevated fragment with two screws proximally and the plate. This is the plate. Second plate is fixed from the same approach. Both the plates are seen, and that's the closer time. Popliteal muscle will cover both the plates. You can take suture also. One or two sutures. It's like a pronator quadratus in the wrist. Similar. The property is like a spinal quadratus in the wrist. Exactly same way. You have to cover. You have to elevate, release everything. And vessels are there. You can see. And there's the post of X-ray, uh, elevated, fixed. So tibial condyle fracture is like this to the surgeon. We try to kill the surgeon, but we have to take every risk and drop every fear to come across. And I cannot teach anybody anything. I can just make think. Thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm.